10,000 for this painting. This one goes for 400 now. See, there's 1750. I'm a fing paisa for me telling that grew up on EVT. In reality, I should humble myself and remember where I came from, right? I should I should be like, oh, take it for free because I, I was born broke, so I gotta stay broke. No, no, that's not the mentality. Just because you were born broke, you don't stay broke. You don't go to college coming from a poor family to get a higher education to charge pennies. You go to college to be able to ask for it and demand for a certain payment. So just like the broke chick from the hood goes to college to hire up her status and to be able to charge more, me, this broke chick from the hood, learned and hustled and learned this business that I created, which is my art, in the streets and I have a college degree in the streets. So I have a street degree hustling in the streets. So I am entitled to ask for whatever money I want. My name is San Juan. Today I'm hanging out with Curly. Ow. Cheers. And we're gonna talk about my dolls, my art, and my life. Tell me how you started. So I started when I was 10 years old. When I was 10 years old, I did a drawing. Uh-huh. I said I did a drawing of a doll, and Miss Stefanovich was like, this is amazing. This drawing is so beautiful. You're an artist. She was giving me so much props on my little drawing that I did because I remember putting effort into it. After that day with Ms. Stefanovich, I became obsessed with drawing. And then when I turned 16, I become the artist of the class in my Chicano studies class. And it was this teacher named Miss Regal. Miss Regal was so supportive, she would always let everyone know that I was the artist of the class. That was the first time ever that I did not fall asleep in class. Because I was such a rebel, like, ah, screw school. But I was always into drawing. She tapped into me wanting to draw cholas. It was the big hair with the pompadour and the long nails. And I was just so obsessed with drawing that. But it all started in a small garage. In a garage. My garage, that was the beginning of everything. I started in my garage in East LA. And that was it. Mm -hmm. That was the spot. I put like four spotlights, pop, 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 pop. Cause my aunt had moved out of her house and they left to Vegas. So they left with all their junk. So I found spotlights there. I ran a big orange cord from my kitchen window all the way to the outside, made a hole. Brrr. Electrical work right here in that garage when nobody cared about me, when nobody was calling, when nobody was looking for me, when nobody wanted to buy my art. I sat there every single day. And I'll be embarrassed sometimes because my mother will be like, Stan, when are you gonna get a job? Because all her coworkers would tell her like, she's a chola, she's, she's, she needs to go to college. And I refused to go to college because that was gonna tamper with my dream mm -hmm. of having a stamp factory. After that, I graduated high school. And during 16 to 17, I find out about graffiti. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dude, I wanna be a part of LA. I wanna be a part of my city through spray cans and walls. But I had to learn how to use spray cans and how to not be afraid of heights. a doll with long nails, mm -hmm. smiling, with a go-to, big eyelashes and McDonald Chola eyebrows and crazy red hair. Mm -hmm. I start training myself to get up on ladders, to use spray cans, to learn how to do a line, to learn how to create a doll through air and paint. All I knew was East LA, yeah. and that's where I start. Yeah. Then I start discovering that there was Beverly Hills, West LA, Mid City, Santa Monica. Bah, my world opens. That bus pass took me so far. So from like 4 p.m. and all night, mm -hmm. I'll be painting walls. I will be out in the streets of LA painting dolls. I just believed in my art. I believed in it so much when nobody believed. People tell me that I'm not worthy. My own culture always tells me that. There's so many women that I read on Instagram, which it doesn't bother me, but I do read a lot of women and when I look at their profile, they're Latinas. Mm -hmm. They're minorities and they're like, it's too expensive. You shouldn't charge that much. Why the f would you open your mouth and say that? You're a minority just like me and you just told me that I'm not worth the price that I believe that I'm worth. Mm -hmm. Do not devalue my price. So I've always been very confident. Deep inside, those feelings are in a box, but I do feel sometimes like, am I charging too much? But hold on, this is making up for all the years that I didn't eat, that I couldn't pay my bills, that I couldn't afford anything because I was learning. I was putting myself mentally through college in the streets of LA painting murals for free. This is years of my life, years of my life to be able to figure out how to do this cutout doll. Years of my life to be able to make this cup you're drinking out of. Years of my life to be able to create this material printed to be able to create this crop top with my art. Hey, I do deserve it. Well, it's not worth it. It should be $10. Why? Because you can't afford it? 
step it up. You don't go to Mercedes Benz dealer and tell them they're too expensive. You yeah. own up to it. If Coco Chanel, that was a poor orphan, thinking at a f-ing cabaret, made it to be the biggest fashion house in the world, me, my little Mexican ass, Mexican Guatemalan from EVT with a single mom, growing up in the hoods of East LA, walking through Whittier Boulevard, taking the bus with a bus path, pedaling a bike, I can do it too. What would you say to someone who's young, who yeah. does have this talent, who wants to go, but they're scared and maybe they do have something? I feel like, look, I spent all my youth creating Fan One, becoming Fan One, waiting for that moment and I always feared getting older and not doing shit with my skill. So I put aside love, pregnancies, boyfriends. I put all that to the side because that was derouting me. And I decided to put my focus 1000% into my art to not waste any minute of my life because I was like, it would be a fucking shame to have wasted my youth not doing shit with my skill and then become a bitter bitch. Work with what you have. I've worked with my own stuff. Whatever I've had at every stage of my life, it's what I've worked with. I'm my own investor. I'm my own product manager, product developer. I'm my own creative director. I'm yeah. my own every single yeah. professional name there is. Yeah. Position that anyone needs in their business. I want women to be like, damn. She was the artist of like the forgotten chicks. Like she painted for the streets, you know? Like she was, she created a culture that wasn't there. You know, like my girls go to Walmart, they go to Target, they go to the welfare office, they, they're going to school, they're on student aid, maybe they got their dreamers, they have DACA, they probably are single moms, or maybe they're, they're young girls with dreams, they're, they're girls that are trying to find their way and I'm their artist. You know, there's so many different women, but they all connect with me because they feel me. When I talk about my bicycle, my bus path, they're like, that's me, Sam, that's me right now, or that was me, or that used to be me. Me and Russell forever. Russell, nobody can hurt us anymore.